At the same time, the engineers were hunting down the manpower and materials to strengthen the wind bracing at each of the 200 suspect connections. Le Measure designed H-shaped steel reinforcement plates, which would have to be welded in place while the building was unoccupied at night. Le Measure now realized that the unusual structural design of the building could be made to work to their advantage. Because these joints were all therefore accessible, and the actual mobilization to get at them and fix them was relatively straightforward. The work was to be done at night and as secretly as possible, as soon as the office staff had left the building. I knew that all we had to do was strip off the gypsum board fireproofing and we could see these joints. The actual fix, in most cases, was very simple. It was a matter of getting some very thick steel plate, a very high stick, two inches thick, putting pieces on both sides of the steel diagonals uh, across the joint which was held together with the bolts. And within a day or two, the first connection started being put in place. We had between 21 and 23 welders working at a time, and on weekends we would have a few more. They worked every night and Saturday and Sunday. When you weld, particularly when you weld as much as we were welding, you produce a lot of smoke. You simply couldn't live on a floor that we were welding. And I think that the people living in the building would have become very upset if they understood exactly the dimensions of the problem. We had flown into New York, my wife and I, in a plane that had made available to us. It was a private plane. The pilot had to skirt some thunderstorms and ended up coming in close to Manhattan, and there was the building, sparkling. So by the time people actually started walking into the building, it was back clean and normal, and everybody was, was working again. No smell of welding, no one, no one except the uh, people who had been told understood exactly what was going on. And all the newspapers in New York, it turned out, went on strike at that time. It stayed that way until October. If the newspapers hadn't been on strike, I dread to think what would have happened. It would have, been, it would have been pure hell, I think. My memory says that we did the whole job from the very start to the very end in eight weeks, and that we managed, and I know this is disputed, uh, eight to ten million dollars in that time. Now, it takes a lot of work from a standing start, no, uh, no preparation, to spend ten million dollars. 1978 dollars in eight weeks.